Hi folks, this is Rich, and today we're going to take a quick look at how to execute SQL statements from within VBA inside of MS Access database. Uh, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you do have familiarity with Visual Basic for Applications and also SQL. Uh, this is considered an advanced topic, so let's take a look. Okay, so if you are building applications in MS Access, at some point you will probably want to execute SQL statements from your VBA code. Uh, so the scenario that I have set up here to demonstrate how to do that is that we have a table to store employee info, just a few fields in there, last name, first name, hire date, role ID, and a role table just to populate a combo box that we're going to use on our form in a second, the data entry form with the subform below. So this uh, data entry form is pretty simple. It just takes a first name, last name, hire date, and work role. And when the save button is clicked, it's going to execute an insert statement. So the SQL statements that we're going to look at today are going to be insert, update, and delete. I am going to cover select statements and working with record sets inside of VBA in a separate video. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll start entering some information for myself here. Okay. And when I click that button, of course, it's going to put us down here into this subroutine that I already have built up to put our SQL statement in. Uh, the code above this is just boilerplate stuff that I wanted to uh, add to the form so that it functions the way I need it to for this. All right, so insert statements have to follow this syntax. We use the insert command, the into keyword, then we provide a table name. Then we provide a list of field names, which are comma separated, that we are actually going to provide values for and that we want to insert into the table. Then we use the values keyword, parentheses again, and the values that we want to plug into those fields separated by commas. They have to be in the right order. In other words, field one is going to receive the value one. Field two is going to receive the second value of this and so on. All right, so now let's declare a string variable to hold our SQL statement as we build it up. Now let's start building our SQL state. Again, our table name is TBL employee. We're going to use the last name field. We don't have to obviously insert a value for the ID field because it is an auto number field. So we're only going to be concerned with last name, first name, hire date, and role ID. Now, I could type this uh, SQL statement all out on one line, but anybody that viewed it, including myself later, would have to scroll far to the right to see everything, and it's just kind of hard to read and to maintain. So I like to use string concatenation and kind of build it downwards so that each line uh, does a specific thing. Okay, so the values that we pass in uh, to this string are going to come from our form controls. And we'll start with last name since that's the first field in our field name list here. Okay, so there's my text box last name. I don't need the me keyword. I just wanted you to be able to see that with the uh, IntelliSense there. And since we're going to be putting other fields after this one, I do need a comma there. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to take whatever value exists in the form in the text box, txt, last name, and plug it into the field in the table, last name, in a new record. But it does need one more thing before, before it's going to be valid. Um, last name is a short text data type in the table. So it's expecting text uh, to, to plug into that field, and it will get it from this uh, text box. But... All text in the SQL statement needs to be enclosed in a quote. So I'm going to add that there. I can add the second one here. And we're going to do that again for first name. Okay. So higher date is an actual date value. It will not need a quote. It's going to need a hash. K 
character. So dates are enclosed in hash characters of DBA and also in SQL. Now, what it gets from CBO role is going to be a role ID, which is a numeric value. So we do not need these single quotes at all. Nothing needs to go around it. And we won't need the quote here or the comma because this is the last value that we're passing in. So we don't need anything after that. Okay. And that should build our SQL statement. Let's have a look at it here. Okay, so I've got a problem. It looks like, okay, so string SQL equals, but I forgot to concatenate. Let's try that again. Okay, so here is our SQL statement. Insert into table employee, parenthesis, a list of field names, parenthesis, values. I forgot a parenthesis there, so let's go back up here. Put in a parenthesis. Third time should be the charm. Okay, values in parentheses and enclosed in the right type of character. Good. We don't need that trail of space there, so I just went ahead and took that out. All right, so we have our SQL statement built, but how do we actually get it to execute? Well, we're going to use the do command and we're going to tell it to run SQL and we're going to pass in our SQL string as a parameter. All right, so let's play that. All right, we get the message that we're about to append one row. We do want to do that. Let's go ahead and let that play through. Let's our stops. Now, if we come and look at our form, we see that indeed it did add me to the, to the table in the subform. So here it is in the table, ID 13. Okay, so let's recap what our code actually did one more time. Okay, so based on the SQL syntax here, we declared a variable to hold our string while we built it up, and we took form controls to get our values that are passed into the SQL string. Once we had our SQL string complete, we ran a do command and passed that SQL string in as a parameter. So let's add a couple more folks to our data table here. John Doe coming in maybe last month. Warehouse. Okay, we're about to append one row. Now, if this were an actual application, we probably wouldn't want the users to see that message every time they tried to add someone to the table. So let's go ahead and disable that now. We can do that with another do command. Set warnings. False. And we want to do that just before our SQL command executes. And then right after it executes, we want to set our warnings back to true. We don't want to keep those warnings off. They can be, they can be important. There we go. No message. It just adds the user. Okay, so now we're going to look at the update SQL statement when we want to edit an existing user's information. So the way that I have this form set up, if we double click someone down on the subform, their information comes up into the, the controls at the top of the form. So let's take my information and say, okay, it wasn't actually 2012, it was 2011. Now when we say save, this time because an ID exists for that record, I test for that in the background, it's going to take us to the update routine, not the insert routine. Okay, so a SQL statement to make an update to a record has to follow this syntax. You use the update keyword, provide the table name, then the set keyword. Now you can provide a list of field value pairs, the field name, the equal sign, and whatever value you want to pass into it, comma, the next field that you want to assign a value to, the equal sign, and whichever value you want to assign it, and so on and so on. At the end of that, when you've assigned all the values to all the fields that you want, you typically use a WHERE clause to specify which record you want to make these changes to. And in this case, it's going to be pretty simple. Whichever ID shows up in the user entry form, that's the ID that we're going to look for in the table. So again, we're going to declare a string variable to hold our string. Start building it out.
Okay. And again, I like to put my SQL statement across several lines so that each line does a specific thing. Let's use that single quote again because the value that we're about to give it from our form control is going to be a text value. And that's what the field expects too because that's its data type. And again, we use a comma because we're going to update more than just one field. So, so far we've done the update keyword, the table name, the set keyword, and now we're going to provide values to fields. Um, I could have made this more sophisticated and just checked on which fields were actually changed and only update those fields, but that makes the code a little more complicated. And since there are only four fields on the form or in this table, I can just update all four fields pretty, pretty quickly. field name and the control that we want to pull the value from to plug into that field. And again, this is a date value this time, so we don't use the quote. We use the hashtag. Just like if we were entering a literal because it actually turns it into a literal in the string statement. And again, role ID is numeric, so we don't need these quotes. And since it's the last value we're plugging in, we don't need that comma. Okay, great. Now we need to add our WHERE clause. And we just want to say WHERE the field ID in the table equals The value that's in the text box text ID on the form because that lets that that's the record that we're editing up in the form area it's looking that record up in the table again we will turn our warnings off be sure to turn them back on we'll run our SQL statement Let's check our SQL statement first. SQL string. So I didn't actually concatenate, I just kept overriding it. Okay, so I have another typo in my syntax here. There we go. All right, so there's our update statement, update keyword, table employee, set keyword, field last name is gonna equal this value, first name is gonna equal this value, hire date is gonna equal this value, and so on. This is going to only take place in the record where the ID equals 13. So let's run that. Let's go back and see if it actually updated my hire date to 2011. And yes, we can see there that it did. All right, so now we are going to look at the delete SQL statement, which is usually the least complicated. Uh, so we're going to pull up John Doe into the user form here, click delete. It's going to take us down to the subroutine for the delete statement. Okay, so a delete statement in SQL has to follow this syntax, delete from, table name, and then a condition. And in this case, again, the, the record that we're looking for, the ID field or primary key, is going to equal whatever the value is in the form where it's being edited. So again, we're going to declare a string variable. 
to hold our string, our SQL string, and then we're going to start building it. And there's really no need to split that up across two or more lines because in this case it's extremely simple. You can easily see what's going on uh, just by looking at one line. Turn our warnings off. Now, when it comes to deletes or even updates, uh, you may want to leave your warnings on or you may want to provide a custom warning. Uh, but for deletes especially, it's a good idea to ask the user if they really do intend to make that delete. I'm going to go ahead and leave it off here. SQL, pass in our SQL statement string again as a parameter. We're going to check our SQL syntax before we run it. Delete from table employee where ID equals 16. Play it through. And Mr. John Doe should be gone from our list, and he is. Okay, so hopefully that video is useful to anyone who may be just starting out executing SQL statements within their VBA code. Uh, if you did like this video, I'm going to be sharing a lot more uh, regarding access programming, VBA, and some other, other programming uh, projects. I'd like to tackle real-world uh, scenarios that I've encountered, like uh, the need to sometimes kick all the users out of a database uh, if you need to make an emergency update, or also how to automatically update users' machines with the latest version of a database. I'm going to cover things like that. Uh, so don't forget to like and subscribe and share. And uh, if you would like to reach me for a project, for a collaboration or, or some uh, tutoring or anything like that, uh, by all means, uh, visit my website. Uh, the link's in the description below. And thanks.